Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have an epic monumental video. Something I hope is a reference video for years, decades, forever, as long as this video is up. And I know that's a lofty goal, but I've spent a lot of time on this video uh, because it's a note that is truly near and dear to my heart. It's one of my favorite notes and it's Iris. So go watch my first. This is not a top 10 Iris video. This is going to be a ranked not a top 10 Iris video, and it's going to be a top 100. And it's going to be including some samples and some things that have Iris and Oris in them. I just, once I got started, I couldn't stop. I spent a lot of time building this. It's going to be a pain in the rear to put all the stuff away when it's done. There's stuff everywhere. Uh, it's going to test my ability to know my collection because I'm going to have to reach behind me and grab stuff. There's no space for me to put it all. It's stuff everywhere. You can't see it, but it's all over. So buckle up, this video is going to be long. A couple things, number one, they're ranked based on my taste. Number two, I couldn't include everything, obviously. Even a top 100 with Iris, Iris Palladia, Iris, um, you know, Oris Butter, and all the different types of Iris, Oris Butter, absolutely. I mean, there's a million different notes to look for in each fragrance and, and so forth and so on. So this is based on my nose. I also have the blessing of liking the cheaper Iris. I know there's some people out there that are like, I only like the iris from, you know, Mass Milano, or luckily for me, I like iris in any form, whether it's Dior, niche houses, indie house, I love iris, okay? So, um, obviously, uh, if you want to know more about the note itself, go check out my first video, because we're just going to jump right in, excuse me, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, I have a lot of honorable mentions to talk about, but first, we have to do Scent of the Day, because I'm wearing what I think at this moment in time is my favorite fragrance. I actually did a top 100 of my favorite fragrances of all time. This ended up number two. I think it would be number one if I re-ranked it. It is the great Chanel Antaeus, and this is the deep vintage with the uh, silver on the top, the silver atomizer, and my God, man, I'm just, you know, it's cold here in Texas today. There's actually some snow on the ground, and I am just, you know, today was a busy day. I had to catch up on some stuff, and, um, this accompanying me all day was just heaven. Absolutely heavenly. So, Chanel Antaeus, my scent of the day. Uh, best castorium money can buy, I think, but try to get an older one. All right, so let's get started talking about some of these. Um, as you know, Iris and Oris usually adds this powdery aspect to a fragrance. Sometimes it can seem cold. Sometimes it can seem slightly warm. Uh, it can seem rooty. It can seem vegetal. It can seem potato-like sometimes, uh, and I love all aspects of Iris. It can seem makeup y uh, So we're going to talk about some samples first, and um, some of these I've talked about on the channel, some of them I haven't, but you know what? I want this video to be a reference. So even though this is going to seem like a lot of stuff to talk about, I didn't want to leave anything out because I didn't think it would be fair to it. I talk about a lot of the stuff that I have full bottles of. Sometimes I leave out some of the stuff that I don't have full bottles of just because you know, I don't have a bottle of it, so it doesn't get talked about. So I want to mention some of these in the Iris video. So the very first one is Lonesome Rider. This is thanks to Rich Mitch. There's Oris Root in the heart here. There's also Castorium. It's supposed to be leathery and smoky, and um, I'm going to try to kind of go fast through these. I'm not going to do my usual amount of discussion, but I want to mention them in the video. If I don't go fast, it's going to be an 18-hour video. Okay. Next is going to be Figment Woman. This is thanks to Allie. Thank you, thank you, Allie, by the way, for sending me these Amouage Women's versions. Uh, Iris is in the base here, and it's supposed to be like a floral, spicy fragrance. Apparently, lots of tuberose and langy lang and jasmine and orange blossom with the iris in the base and some pepper and saffron in the top. Uh, and then we have Dia Woman, which I'm very excited to explore these Amouages. Maybe I'll do like a... Um, live stream where I test four at a time because I think it would be a great way to kind of test a lot at once and get my thoughts out there. So Dia Woman is a floral powdery fragrance built by Jean-Claude Elena in 2002 and it's got iris in the um it's got oris in the mid. I bet you Dia Woman's going to be beautiful. Uh violet leaf in the top too it sounds like uh, a true unisex fragrance. And then there's a new house that I've been exploring lately. I wore one of the fragrances one time so far, but I haven't smelled uh, any of these samples. This is thanks to Rachel. She sent me um, four samples from the house of Darren Allen. 
and one of them is a fragrance called Sweet Repose. And Sweet Repose is um, apparently this uh, lavender, violet, iris, and orris butter. I have a feeling it's going to be a beautiful vanillic iris with this ambery, resinous um, myrrh in the base. Um, sounds amazing. So I can't wait to I can't wait to explore that house further. Okay, next is one that is really overlooked. I have a discovery atomizer thanks to my good friend Armando, um, and he sent me so much stuff that is just amazing. I never would have got my nose on before. This is Andy Warhol's Silver Factory is how it was originally issued. Okay, and you can see I've given it a decent amount of wear since he sent it. It, it then turned into Silver Bond once they lost their um, Andy Warhol license, and then they just discontinued it altogether. But this is basically this iris um, with frankincense. It's like a lavender iris frankincense with woody resins in the base. It's actually really, really good. One of the better uh, Bond number no. 9 perfumes that no one talks about. Hard to find, but if you like frankincense, that's a unique take on it. And then, again, sticking with uh, stuff Armando sent me, this is a um, early 90s bottle of Lancome's Maggie Noir. I can't wait to get to know this. So apparently um, the iris is in the heart with honey and lots of, um, you know, spicy oriental notes with castorium in the base. And you guys know I love castorium, speaking of Antaeus. My God, man. Ugh, Antaeus is so good. Um, okay. Next, a Guerlain I actually have a review on the channel about, and this is one of those true unicorn fragrances. It's called Jeddi, and Jeddi is um, aldehydes, animalic, leathery, big vetiver. I think vetiver is kind of the backbone, and there's this iris in the, um, in, in the heart. It feels necrotic somehow you know necrotic is a great word for jeddy and yet it's one of the most beautiful things i've ever smelled how can it be necrotic and uh beautiful at the same time i mean that's vintage gear lawn for you okay now one that is full bottle worthy for sure oh by the way the re reason we're going through samples is because i only ranked the bottles that i had full bottles of so if they're samples they're not on the ranked list only the full bottles made it on the ranked list it would have really taken me 18 years otherwise. So that's why we're going through the samples to try to include these, some of these that did not make them on the list. So this is uh, Kenitze 10 Golden Edition. Now, Golden Edition, I think is so good. I think it's probably a take on a Spanish leather. I really want a vintage of Kenitze. Someone left me a message saying it's Kenitze, uh, that the Z is said like a J. I'll take their word for it. I have no reason to disbelieve them. So we'll say Caniche 10. Uh, and the iris is in the heart. God, this is such a great leathery, spicy, again, castorium note used to kind of make that leather accord. Um, I really want a bottle of that golden edition. Uh, okay, next is a fragrance I've never sniffed yet. It's from the house of Laurent Mazon, and it's called Ultimate Seduction. Ultimate Seduction. So it's pink pepper, black currant, iris, rose, violet, patchouli, cedarwood, pralines, amber, and blonde woods. I don't know about pralines, but I'll give it a fair shake. Nine years ago that came out. All right, a couple of zoologists I plan on talking about very soon. Uh, this is Snowy Owl. Look at her. That's the kind of coat I need right now if I'm going to go outside. It's cold as heck in Texas. Uh, and the iris is in the heart along with snowdrop, snow, coconut, lily of the valley, white rose, Musk, civet, you get the idea. Um, that thick, white feeling is kind of what I uh, get when I read the notes. I've never smelled it yet. And then also Panda, another one I've never smelled. But uh, this is the version 2.0 from 2017. And Panda has iris in the heart with bamboo and earthy notes and stuff like that. Interesting. I like zoologists, you know, at least it's something different. Uh, I like houses that are unique. Okay, there's three Papillons. Uh, I don't think anyone in the game now, in the niche game, does Iris the way Liz Moores does Iris. She has such a deft hand. Uh, she's so talented. You know, just uh, the way that whenever you smell Iris from her creations, you won't smell Iris 
in that style, I think, uh, anywhere else in, in, in the niche game. I don't think they really exist. I think she just has this style that makes it so unique. So the first one is called um, Dryad, and I still have to do a, a early impression on Dryad on the channel very soon. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm trying not to do that in your ear. Once you get talking a lot, sometimes, you know, your throat... Uh... Anyways, I do have some water with me, um, and thank God I do. So Dryad 2017 is supposed to be a green Sheepra. There's a million notes. Um, Galbanum, and it's compared to uh, Valden Wheat X-Ray, which is very high on this list. I just discovered that for the very first time this week. Oh my god. Um, so if it's anything like Valden Wheat X-Ray, I'm going to get a bottle of it. Um, but uh, it's it's Iris and a million other Sheepra-like notes. And then uh, there's also one that I do have a review on the channel called Hera. And she built this for her daughter's um, wedding. And it's a floral powdery fragrance that has iris and ambrette. And that iris ambrette combo will remind you a little bit of Dior Homme. But, um, you know, this is kind of her take on it. There's clary sage and heliotrope and rose. It's just beautiful. Was built for her daughter's wedding. I would happily wear that. Amazing on my skin. Uh, and I think hair is probably the most expensive fragrance from her line, but it's so beautiful. Uh, and then Angelique, which is probably the most overlooked from the Papillon line. Angelique is this mimosa powdery iris with frankincense and osmanthus. And it's as beautiful as it sounds. It's floral. It's got woody aspects, white champaca and cedar wood. Oh, man. And I have a review of Angelique on the channel as well. Absolutely stunning. Everything she touches is amazing. Um, okay, next is a Zerzhoff, a house I don't really care for, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a fair shake on these. And this is a fragrance that came out in 2018, and it's supposed to be Zerzhoff's take on Creed's Silver Mountain Water. And this is called Zerzhoff Casamorati Mephisto Gentle Uomo. So I'll talk about this on the channel very soon. This is thanks to my buddy Scott from Germany. Thank you, Scott. Um, and there's iris and rose and violet in the heart with lavender and those white musks that you get in silver mountain water. Uh, okay, next is going to be a Zerzhoff. I do have a review on the channel uh, about, and I really like this. I would buy a bottle. If I could find an older bottle, like one of the vintage bottles, if anyone knows of a vintage bottle of this, let me know. I would, I would totally go for it. Um, and it's called Richwood. And so apparently the older bottles used to have real Mysore sandalwood. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, it's like this um, citrusy, woody, spicy fragrance with iris, rose, and black currant. So it's a little bit fruity, uh, but that labdanum and that sandalwood in the base with the patchouli and vanilla is so beautiful. This is a Zerzhoff I can get behind. It's one of my favorite Zerzhoffs. Um, I just... I can't buy the modern stuff. I would want a vintage bottle. Okay, next is a fragrance I actually have smelled and worn. I've worn this to bed once, um, but I haven't talked about it on the channel yet. I only have a little tiny decant, and it's called Rogue's Vetifleur, that very first one right here. Uh, and Rogue's Vetifleur is... Uh, very white floral opening, lots of jasmine in the opening, and I went, ooh, the first time I smelled it, but it dries down to this beautiful rose, java vetiver, and iris, stunning fragrance with, with that rogue oak moss that you're used to smelling, really beautiful. Um, okay, next on the list is another fragrance I have a um, review of on the channel, and it's from the spirit of Dubai, and it's called Tarath. Uh, and Taroth is a fruity oriental. I'm not even going to bother get it in, getting it out just in the spirit of time. Uh, a million notes in these Spirit of Dubai fragrances. Uh, there's oud and iris and violet and sandalwood and the heart and a, a million other notes. Ambergris and oak moss, civet, all this stuff. But it works out to giving this uh, fruity, you know, you get pineapple and strawberry and blackcurrant. Very succulent. And, uh, but Middle Eastern style fragrance, you know, so it's got that thickness to it. Like there's a lot of um, saffron and rose and fruits and coffee and stuff like that. Really nice fragrance. I enjoyed it. Go, go check out my review if you're interested in Taroth. 
Um, okay, next is a fragrance from the house of Bortnikov. And this is called Bortnikov Classica. And again, thanks to Scott for sending me these little samples. These are a great way to get my nose on new stuff. Um, Classica is 2021 release. It's supposed to be this floral woody fragrance. Um, and it's got all my favorite notes, labdanum, castorium, birch tar, um, patchouli, iris, heliotrope. There's all kind of beautiful things in here. Sandalwood. I can't wait to get to smell this and wear it and do a video on it. I'll do like an early impression video on, um, Classica. And then we've got a Meleg perfume, which I just did a review on a Meleg a week or two ago. I did one on birch tar and Russian leather. It was okay. I didn't love it as much as some people did. Um, but I like my Russian leather fragrances to be like a specific type. And I thought that was very vanilla heavy. Um, it seemed very vanillic to me. And so, you know, I'll stick with the Russian leathers I love. But I'm very excited to check out more of the brand. He's an indie house, um, Matthew Meleg. And this one's called Canadian Gentleman. And Canadian Gentleman is um, English lavender, American sage, Italian bergamot, Canadian cedar, Canadian pine, Omani frankincense, and um, iris and orris butter. And so that's always a great combination. And, you know, if you don't know, apparently orris butter takes something like, they say, three years to, um, uh, to actually mature, two to three years to actually mature. So it's a very expensive ingredient to make because just the time it takes for it uh, while, while it sits uh, maturing. Okay, next is a Lesson de Modable fragrance. And this is called Musque de Sables. And Musque de Sables is an Antoine Lee. Beautiful musk. One of my favorite, um, you know, not counting like Arige Ladore Siberian musk or something like that, which is my favorite, and Bortnikov's Musk Habib. Just if you just isolate the, you know, musk ravageurs and musk de sables, those are, you know, this is one of my favorite um, just out and out um, designer or niche, not counting the indie house, house's musk. And there's a beautiful, stunning um, Oris Absolute note that they used here. And so you get this bitter almond with musk and spicy cardamom with the Oris and it's it's stunning. It's a beautiful creation, probably full bottle worthy. Not my favorite, Lesson Demo Dables, that's reserved for Oriental Velours, but uh, Musk's de Sables is very, very good. Okay, let's talk about some Rojas. I got a bunch of them here. I tried to line some of the brands up kind of in pockets here, but it didn't always work. We're going to hop around some. But I actually have a full review of this on the channel as well. And as you can see, uh, the decanter is bone dry. I can still smell it from the atomizer, though. And this is called Herod's Porom uh, Parfum. Herod's Porom Parfum. And this was sent to me by D.L. Qualia. Thank you very much. And if you noticed, uh, if you're new to my channel, you know, and you notice that I'm, I show a lot of these little decants and samples and stuff like that instead of full bottles, it's because many times I don't get stuff from brands. Uh, I kind of started my channel and just decided I was just going to be honest. That was going to, that was one of the reasons I started my uh, channel was because I was tired of all the BS uh, in Fragcom. And uh, needless to say, uh, it just kind of picked up steam. I didn't need full bottles because so many people appreciated just the, uh, you know, genuine honesty that people sent me stuff, even from the very beginning when I had very few followers and DL Qualia was one of the first. Um, and, and so if you ever see me do like little early impressions or talk about it and I don't, am not showing the full bottle, it's because a lot of times of stuff like this. So Herod's Pour Homme is a really nice spicy citrusy uh great for work kind of scent lots of lavender and thyme and uh beautiful floral heart and in the base there's juniper vetiver and iris amongst many other notes uh amber rome absolute it's a really um nice fragrance but i don't know if i just want nice when i spend six or seven hundred dollars on a perfume but go check out my review if you're interested in learning more and then one I still have to talk about, I've yet to do a full uh, video on it, but uh, I have smelled it and it is very nice. 
Uh, I don't know if I would buy a full bottle, but it is very nice. Where did, I, where did it just go? I just like threw it. Um, I just like, I wonder if it fell. Ah, here we go. It did fall. Okay. So this is a fragrance called Oceania. So Oceania. I've got enough to still wear it more and talk about it. Maybe when it gets a little bit warmer, is Roja's take on like this fresh citrusy fragrance. So if you ever smelled Creed's um, Aralfa, that's a good kind of comparison. This has a little bit more of that um, uh, of that kind of wet concrete, uh, like that Mitiatar feel. But uh, there's lavender, there's that, let's say, a Kubiba note, which tends to kind of extend the citruses deep into the dry down. And uh, in the base, there's that oak moss, juniper, galbanum. Actually, there's a lot of notes in common with Herod's Poor Ohm, the way it's constructed, interestingly enough. Um, it's not a million miles away from each other. And, of course, iris in the base. Um, but uh, Oceania is not too shabby. And next on the list, we've got another one that I actually have a review on on the channel. If you're ever interested in, in trying to see if I have a review on a house... You can actually go to my playlist, and every single house I've done a review for has its own playlist. So like Roja Parfums, for example, has its own playlist, and you can see which ones I've done videos on. So this is called Amber Oud. Probably the best of the Oud collection, if you will. Um, bergamot, lemon, lime, fig, jasmine from grass, may rose, ylang ylang, ambergris, Oud birch, cinnamon, musk, oak moss, iris, patchouli, saffron, sandalwood, and benzoin. Very nice fragrance. I don't think I'll be buying a bottle, but I did enjoy it. And then one I did a review on, but I did not enjoy. This is probably my least favorite Roja Dove perfume. It's from 2016, and it's called A Midsummer Dream. I really did not like A Midsummer Dream. It just smelled like cheap white musks to me. Uh, there was very little movement, very little transition. It really felt like a money grab. Did not enjoy that at all because it came out in Eau de Parfum. Uh, back when many Rojas, there weren't very many um, cheaper Rojas in 2016 when this came out. I think it came out before um, the Parfum Colognes came out, if you will. So, so yes, i uh not a fan of A Midsummer Dream at all. Go check out my review if you want to watch more or learn more about it. And then, a couple of the Discovery Atomizers that I have have an iris or a oris uh, accord. And one of them is called Shepra Extraordinaire. I still need to do a video on this one. Uh, there's a bunch of rojas still that I want to talk about on the channel. This is one of them. Uh, Shepra Extraordinaire, I think, is a really good fragrance. If you know my taste, you know I love Shepras. Uh, this is probably closest to something like Zoologist Civet. If you've ever smelled Civet, um, but the ingredients here do smell a little higher quality. I will give Roja that. Uh, the florals smell a little bit higher quality. The, um, animalic notes smell a little higher quality. The only thing that turns me off about this fragrance is I like my, uh, Shepras to be animalic and challenging. And this has a little more, uh, wearable, like, uh, I would think that would smell amazing on a, executive, a, a woman who's an executive, you know, where, wears power suits to work every day, that would just be a stunning scent for someone like that. For me, I would rather stick with uh, Diaghilev or something that has a little bit more challenging aspect to it. And then there's one that's called Reckless Porom. Now, Reckless Porom is um, a spicy, woody scent I also have a video on. If you want to go check that out, you can. Um, as you can see, I've given it a fair amount of wares. Uh, it is closest to Clive Christian's X for men, but I actually prefer Clive Christian's X for men over Reckless Pour Homme. Uh, I usually don't talk about siage and, you know, longevity and all that stuff, but the longevity is actually really bad here. You, you get probably two to three hours. Um, and I just reapply, but, uh, the iris is in, in the base. And then we've got 
I think the final Roja here is Sultanate of Oman, probably one of my favorite Middle Eastern versions. Uh, they've got that Middle Eastern line. Sultanate of Oman is uh, one of my favorite. It's a peppery, fruity, um, it's got like elemi and cardamom and um, oud and birch and iris. Uh, and the uh, iris is mixed with birch and frankly, it's very posh, beautiful incense. If you're a fan of incense fragrances, this is a very high level, high class incense. It smells very, it's got that luxury blob smell. Beautiful woody oriental. Um, so I need to do a full review on that still as well. Okay. Next on the list, we have a house I've never talked about before on the channel. It's uh, a friend made this for me. It's Gallagher Fragrances, and this is called Amongst Waves. And Amongst Waves is, is an aquatic, like a melony, fruity aquatic with uh, pomegranate, lime zest, sea salt, tulip, and it has an iris note in the heart. So I'm excited to wear that once it gets warmer one day. And then another brand that was brought to my attention, I've never smelled this before. The brand is called The Harmonist, and this is called Yin Transformation. So Yin Transformation is a floral sweet scent. It's got Calypso Orchid, Bulgarian Rose, Almond Milk, Ylang Ylang, Iris, White Musk, Sandalwood, and Benzoin. That uh, milky touch with the Iris and Ylang really interests me. Uh, I'll be interested to see what that's all about. Um, okay, next on the list, we have a couple more Less Than Demo Dablas. Probably the ones that you guys thought would be on the list is Iris Pearl. And Iris Pearl is a Antoine Lee from 2017. It's French Iris, Egyptian Violet Leaf, Moroccan Mimosa Absolute. Sea Breeze, Clary Sage, Jasmine, uh, Auriculatum Absolute, and Madagascan Ylang Ylang. Uh, this is a softer iris. You know, if you're somebody who likes your fragrances to be very soft skin scents, I think you would really like Iris Pearl. For me, I much prefer the way that he built Musk's de Sables over Iris Pearl. Iris Pearl is still a good iris, very high quality ingredients. It's French iris, uh, but I don't think it's for me. It's not my kind of fragrance, if that makes sense. And then we've got an MDCI, uh, which came out a couple years ago. No one talks about this. I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about this uh, on the channel, except for maybe Zhao. I think Zhao talked about this. This is called um, Le Elegant. Le Elegant. And it uh, came out in 2021. It's an Irene Farmachiti. She's the perfumer. Uh, and this is a fragrance that when you smell it, it'll smell slightly familiar because it's basically this peppery, uh, woody, spicy with little hints of Middle Eastern style fragrances here and there. You get a little bit of saffron, you know, a little bit of that oody, uh, cashmeran base that smells that you've probably smelled before, but this is very well done. It also has this honeyed cinnamon, spicy, divana cumin thing in the mid. Um, I really like this. It's not going to blow anyone away. I think it's an easier wear for Middle Eastern style fragrance, but it's very nice. Very, um, I wouldn't say it's elegant necessarily, but I enjoy it. Okay, next on the list and see what happens is I stop going fast. I start going into all of the details. Sheepra Palaton. No, needs no introduction. I want a bottle of this very badly. Uh, 2012. It's a Spicy Sheepra by Bertrand Duchafour from 11 years ago. One of his best works, I think. Galbanum, Labdanum, Plum, Jasmine, Iris, Gardenia, Benzoin, Leather, Castorium, Everlasting Flower, Absolute, Tolu Balsam, Styrax. I mean, it's just a stunner. One of my favorite fragrances of all time. And then there is a uh, fragrance that I still have to review from the House of Centauri Perfumes. And it's called Proxima. So Proxima is uh, black currant, berries, aldehydes, air accord, blonde woods, iris, jasmine, sambac, and musk. Peter Carter's the um, owner and in-house perfumer. And he did send me this little sample set. So thank you, Peter. He also sent me this recently, speaking of Peter Carter. Um, and it's a Digit and Zach 
fragrance. Uh, a brand I've never smelled before. And this is called Emperor's Court. Just randomly. He did he did very kindly send me this. So shout out to Peter. Uh, I'm very excited to kind of get to know this and talk about it on the channel. Okay, next on the list we have uh, Creed's Millicene Impidial. And here it is. Millicene Impidial. I need to wear this and talk about it because my bottle has actually turned. So I want to do a video on it. Um, you know, one of, um, Pierre Bourdon's most popular works. Uh, it's still not even credited to him on Parfumo, which is crazy. Bergamot, Blackcurrant, Violet Leaf, Iris, that marine notes that were so popular in 1994. Um, Cedarwood, Musk, and Sandalwood. So, yeah, that's a, that's a real popular one. And then... I'm just going to grab this real quick from the cap. It's so sticky still. Scott sent me these from Germany. They they leaked. This is uh, Godolphin. I can smell it all over the uh, it's, it, the, bo the little bottle. Um, but it's still enough to for me to wear and talk about on the channel. Godolphin is a 2011 release. Leathery, spicy. It's got saffron, thyme, iris, jasmine, rose, amber, Vanilla, vetiver, white cedar wood, and musk. And it's supposed to be this take on um, Tuscan leather. It's Parfum de Marly's take on Tuscan leather. Okay, next is a decant that was very kindly sent to me by Eddie, who, go watch my live stream unboxing. Amazing, three and a half hours almost of just unboxings. It was four packages from four different people. Uh, shout out to all of them. But one of them was a Fort and Manly. And this is called... Uh, Fatih Sultan Mahmad. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But um, more than enough juice for me to wear and get to know. Apparently it's a 2016 release. And it's a um, rose patchouli with red apple, vanilla, oud, tulips, and, I and iris and cedar wood. Uh, am ambergris, benzoin. Sounds like a beautiful fragrance. And the house of Fortin Manley is a house I really wanted to get to know and am excited to get to know. Okay, now here's one I actually have a full review up on the channel. It is, God, I, I really should buy a bottle of this. This is crazy. It's uh, from the house of Beaufort and it's called Rake and Ruin. I really like Beaufort. They're such a unique house. They, um, I, I should buy a bottle of Rake and Ruin. This is full bottle worthy. For, it's my kind of fragrance. You know, if you like challenging complex uh, fragrance that really is like art in a bottle. This is it. It's smoky. There's gin and licorice and, and it smells like a, um, uh, go check out my review, but it basically smells like the inside of, like you're traveling on the Mayflower, you know, the first time coming over to the Americas or something like that. It, it has that feel to it. Crates, um, you know, smoke from the cannons, castorium, costus, you know, there's a little bit of dirt. People haven't showered in a long time. And there's labdanum and iris. So it's a, it's, I love this type of perfumery though, challenging. Now, the type of perfumery that I don't like, and again, I have a review on this on the channel. Uh, it's from the house of Astrophil and Stella. I hope it was just a bad fragrance and not that the brand is all like this. But uh, it's called Patty Shetty. Shitty name, um, in my opinion. Sweet and spicy is basically what this is, but emphasis on sweet, generic, sweet, everything I thought I would like, the coffee, absolute, the cacao, absolute, the iris, um, I ended up not liking any of it. It was uh, extremely sweet to the point of making me, you know, sick almost. I don't like sweet fragrances, but petty, shetty, it's a big pass for me, um, but there is iris in it. Okay, now, uh, Erdmez has a fragrance called 24 Falberg, and 24 Falberg is uh, this hyacinth, elang, bergamot, peach, and of course that irisy uh, floral heart with this ambery patchouli dry down. Very interested in getting to know 24 Falberg more. And then there is a... Uh, fragrance from Aris Ladore's The History of a Tar Collection. And one of them is a green Sheepra. Actually, one of them is, go watch my, uh, I did a live stream, actually, with Russian Adam, 
where we tried these. I tried them together with him on the live stream. And the one that I said was my favorite um, was Al Majmua, or one of my favorites. Uh, I really liked Beauty and the Beast, but Al Majmua um, was this um, was this very uh, it was a Sheepra that really just spoke to me. Like I haven't smelled a modern Sheepra that uh, spoke to me like that in a long time. Usually it's the vintage stuff. And there was just something about it. I don't know if it was the, uh, I don't know uh, if it was the ingredients or, or what, but uh, it's a beautiful classic Sheepra. It's a take on a, um, it's a take on a traditional Indian atar. Uh, and so Al Majmua is a iris in the base. Beautiful Shepra. Okay, next is a house that I actually did a couple videos on and the uh, owner, Joseph Cortana, reached out to me. He sent me the sample set. I haven't been able to get to it yet because I've had so much stuff sent my way, but I hopefully will very soon. Uh, and this is called Bloodflower. So this one I actually have a review up on the channel already. And uh, Bloodflower couple drops in this one, but I have another uh, sample over there. I really like this one. This was my favorite of the of the house I've smelled so far. Alexandra Carlin from Simrise made this, and it's licorice, anise, blood, clover, iris, black rose, amber, and patchouli. Beautiful creation, actually. Very unique. Speaking of fragrances that are unique and tell a story, uh, that that's a great uh, one of my one of actually one of my favorite licorice fragrances I've smelled so far. And then. We've got a um, imaginary author's fragrance, and somewhere in here, ah, here it is, it's right here. I'm not going to take it out in the spirit of time, but this is called Yesterday's Haze. Uh, so I've got uh, a couple mills here, it looks like, to wear and get to know. Tree bark, fig, fruity notes, iris, cream, tonka, and walnut. Interesting notes. Um, I don't know how I feel about, you know, walnut, but I bet... I bet it's not too bad. I'm, I'm interested to get to know. I, it's a house I want to explore more, that, that Imaginary Authors. I own a couple of them, and they're not bad. They're not my favorite, but they're not bad. And rumor is that... <laughs> excuse me. Rumor is that, um, you know, Josh Meyer is very influential in um, fragrance circles that a lot of people kind of look to him for guidance. So trends are kind of set when he move when he moves one way many much of the fragrance industry moves as well I'm, i am going to real quick shut this television off because it is bothering me sorry about that apologies okay so um continuing on there is a chanel here that uh, was very kindly sent to me by one of my perfume god people. It's the EDT of Bel Respiro. And I can't wait to get to, to know this because I think, speaking of Iris, uh, excuse me, I think that um, these uh, Chanel Les Exclusifs, which are all based around Iris, are some of the best Iris fragrances money can buy. I'm sure Bella Respiro is beautiful, aromatic, green, leathery from what I know about it. Okay, now, uh, an Amouage fragrance, which I already have a review up on the channel. And I probably won't buy a bottle, but I really respect this fragrance. And it's called Lyric Woman from 2008. Lyric Woman. Uh, and it was a Danielle Mordial creation. Uh, it's a floral spicy fragrance that really feels more traditionally masculine than the man's version. The reason is the men's version is kind of more soapy and it has that kind of freshness to it with the lime and angelica. This is more traditionally um, slightly more animalic on the rose side. It's thicker. There's um, geranium, iris, ylang, jasmine. There's still angelica, but it's mixed with um, oak moss, woods, tonka, frankincense, vetiver, cardamom, traditionally masculine notes. Um, and, you know, I think both are completely unisex, but uh, Lyric Woman is not to be overlooked if you're a guy. Beautiful perfume. Uh, okay, now one that I really want to get to know. I'm excited to get to know this. It's on the to sniff list. As you can see, I've got a full two mil, maybe even two and a half mil sample here. And it's from the house of Tiziana Terenzi. 
and this is called Ladano Ladano Neto. So I've heard really good things about this. A couple people have mentioned it. Uh, Julio mentioned it a couple times. And this is basically a woody, spicy fragrance with cognac, absinthe, tobacco, rosemary, amber, honey, iris, sandalwood, a, a bunch of notes, camphor tree, frankincense, oud, uh, and of course, gum rock, which is uh, the labdanum, how labdanum is extracted. So I'm very excited to try that one. That sounds like something I would really like. Okay, next is a um, fragrance from the house of Ronnie and Jay. Again, another sample set, very kindly sent to me. This was uh, sent to me by Shiba, and uh, this is Queer Andalou. So that one right there. Queer Andalou. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna... I am just going to shut that door. Okay. So Queer Andalou is leather, neroli, saffron, more leather, rose, violet, iris, patchouli, oud, castorium, and sandalwood. Again, sounds like my kind of fragrance. I have one uh, review from uh, Ronnie and Jay on the channel, so hopefully more to come. Okay, next on the list we have uh, probably my favorite Lamal, which might shock some people because it's sweet. But if you're going to do sweet, I think they really did it right. This is a Louise Turner... Quinton Biche and Nathalie Gracia Cetto, um, trio of perfumers who made this Lamal. Uh, and this is Lamal Le Parfum from 2020. Uh, as you can see, I've given this a couple wears. Uh, cardamom, lavender, iris, vanilla, and oriental woods. And this is definitely sweet and spicy. It's definitely designer-esque. Um... I think the iris is actually what makes the Le Parfum. I think what puts it just a step ahead regular Lamal with that mint and, you know, vanilla thing that it does. But uh, I'll, I'll do a, a full review of both one day once I can just force myself to wear those. Okay, next is a Le Labo and it is Santal 33. I don't hate Santal 33. I know some people do. Um, I... Even the big hits like Aventus and Santal 33 and stuff like that. I mean, I, um, I, I have no problem liking what is popular. Just, you know what I mean? Just because it gets popular. I don't hate this. I see why some people do. Because it has this pickle-like uh, Australian sandalwood smell. And it's very loud. There's lots of ambroxan. It has a huge amount of throw. This is one of the loudest fragrances in my collection. It's gigantic. Um, and there's this dry papyrus, but there is iris that kind of rounds it out. The papyrus and um, iris, and of course there's leather, which I love leather. So, yeah, I don't hate Santal 33, but um, it's one of those fragrances that's been, uh, you know, it was so popular over the last decade, kind of like Aventus, that I think it's like trendy to hate those type of fragrances, and honestly I don't, but... Uh, okay, now, this is at the very tip top of my wish list. If, um, if I could buy or own one bottle right now, this would be it. There's a bottle on eBay for like three grand. I'm not paying that. But, uh, I would love to have a bottle of this. This is numero uno on Ramsey's wish list. Uh, this is Guerlain Metallica, or they had to change the name to Metalis because Metallica, the band, sued them. But it's Bergamot, oh my god. Huh. Bergamot, Carnation, Orange Blossom, Rose, Ylang Ylang, Amber, Iris, Tonka Bean, and Vanilla. And um, that Guerlain Vanilla, no one does vanilla like Guerlain and, and Metallica. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, okay, now another Guerlain I've got a full review on is called Apre Londe. This is the Eau de Toilette. Again, I would love to, to smell the vintage X-ray. Um... But this is still very good. It's florally, it's powdery, it's got that white, um, after the rain, cleanliness feel to it. Uh, there's violet, and um, it's got that an para anise aldehyde that was first synthesized in the 1800s, used here, I think, for probably the very first time uh, by Jacques Guerlain, one of the greatest perfumers of all time, and the iris and uh, musk in the base. Uh, just a beautiful fragrance. And a new Guerlain, which I've never smelled, is Iris Tereffi. 
uh, that came out a couple years ago. It's supposed to be coffee cardamom, iris palladia concrete. Very interesting note. Um, Ambrette, apopanax, vanilla, and uh, sandalwood. So uh, that is iris terephi. So this is a 2 ml little sample. So I'll do a video on this one, one day once I get around to, to wearing it. And then we've got a Pierre Bourdon creation all the way back to the launch of um, Frédéric Mal, and this is Iris Pudra. Iris Pudra, uh, very nice creation. Floral, powdery, it really picks up steam. It almost starts kind of slow, interestingly enough. You know, you kind of smell it and you go, eh. You know, but if you don't give it the time, you'll overlook Iris Pudra. And this is a vintage, it's an older version, pre- you can see it's not the um, uh, EDP France Holdings or whatever the new Estee Lauder version is. That's the before Lauder purchased Frederick Mall. And it's really, really good. The iris and the ebony woods and amber and vanilla in the base make it a beautiful fragrance with, of course, the whole, you know, bunch of flowers in there. Uh, beautiful creation by Pierre Bourdon, as usually. Uh, okay. Another one that I need to talk about on the channel, I have not talked about this one yet. I've talked about its older brother, Jean-Louis Scherer II, which I ended up buying a bottle of because I liked it so much. This one, though, is um, even less talked about from 1979, Jean-Louis Scherer, the original. And it's got blackcurrant bud, galbanum, Florentine iris, and uh, Bulgarian rose, amongst other notes. I need to stop with the note listings and just move on. Okay, next is uh, Histoire de Parfum, 1899. And uh, this is kind of the Histoire de Parfum version of Spice Bomb. And again, I like this. Uh, I own a 15 mil Discovery Atomizer. Would I buy a full bottle? No, uh, but I, I enjoy it. It's um, spicy, sweet. Um, you know, it's it's got that cinnamon warmth that you want on a cold day. But it's also fresh enough from the juniper where I feel like you could wear it even in the warmer weather. Uh, but it probably is more geared towards um, the, the cooler weather. And it is very similar to Spice Bomb, but it's very well done. Uh, like a niche Spice Bomb and the Florentine Iris in the heart is very nice. Okay, uh, we're getting to some of the big hitters here. This is probably, if I ranked the um, decants, we're almost an hour in, I'm still on the decants. Uh, like I said, I hope you guys got your seatbelt on. If I rank the decants, uh, this would be probably number one on many people's iris list, and I completely see why. I'll do a video on it one day. It deserves its own video. It's Serge Luton's Iris Silver Mist. Thanks to Rachel for this decant. Um, floral, powdery, orris root, uh, cold. This is a very cold. When people say, you know, iris can be cold, this is the fragrance that embodies that for me. Something with the way that the uh, white amber, the orris root, the um, spices all come together. The clove just definitely adds this level of coldness. You know, again, on an executive woman who has power and doesn't take any shit and doesn't have the time to deal with many people, you know, I could totally imagine that just working brilliantly. I mean... Uh, Cruella de Vil comes to mind when I think of Iris Silver Mist. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's that kind of perfume, but there's also such a beauty to it. You know, such a beauty to the cold, like watching a beautiful waterfall at Niagara Falls or something. It's freezing outside, but there's just a beauty to it, you know? Um, love Iris Silver Mist. And I just did a video recently on, um... Again, one of the irises that many people would probably put at the very top of their iris list. I had to kind of smell it, but go check out my review. I think I did it justice. I was very fair to it. It's called La Tessa by Mask Milano. Again, uh, another one where uh, it's floral, it's powdery, uh, it's got that champagne opening, which I did really like. I like the pizzazz the champagne gives it. Italian iris absolute, Italian orris root. French Oris Absolute. You know, this is one of the um, fragrances that I think that uh, people point to when they're like, 
Well, I can't wear just Dior Homme anymore. That has the regular iris. I have to have the Italian iris absolute, the true, you know, and, and, I, and I get it. I mean, to each their own. I was, I early on in my journey, I was uh, in a stage like that too, where I only wore Amouage or Creed. And if it wasn't Amouage or Creed, you just didn't understand, you know. And sometimes I feel like that's how some people get with Latessa and those kind of fragrances. Like they have a hard time appreciating anything else because it's in, been ingrained in them by the marketing that this iris is superior. Uh, I liked it, but I don't think I liked it enough to buy a full bottle. Uh, and a new iris that if you're an iris fan is a must sniff for you is this little bad boy. Probably one of the best new irises in the game. It came out last year, 2022, and it's um, Les Abstraits Bellam. I did not buy a full bottle of this because I ended up buying a full bottle of a Chanel, which is in the top five on my countdown. Um, but Bellam is very, very good. It, they say it's like a blanket, like a like a comforting fragrance. If you like those type of fragrances, Bellam is is your uh, is probably for you. It's spicy. It's powdery. The iris smells extremely high quality. Uh, in my, I have a full review on all three Les Abstraits fragrances. Uh, Eugene did send me this little sample, but he did not send me a bottle of Bellam. Uh, and it is. Um, there's a saltiness to the mid, which is very interesting. And, uh, you know, in my review, I continued to talk about the quality of the ingredients because there is, there is this chocolatey um, cacao note that if you've smelled Les Abstraits Vanille Havan, you'll smell that Trinidad cacao that um, Antoine Lee loves using. And it's a beautiful creation. Antoine Lee, I think, is one of the best perfumers in the game right now that's still doing it not counting the Bernard Chance and the Pierre Bourdons that are that are not doing it anymore, but the ones who are still doing it, I think Antoine Lee is at the top uh, of the pyramid. Okay, now here's a vintage that Rachel sent me that made me just go boing, like I just, I, I need a bottle of this. Uh, not as bad as Metallica, Metallica comes first, but this would be great to have a bottle of, if I could find one that's intact. It's from 1964, it's a very first fragrance that Yves Saint Laurent put out and it's called Y. So this is vintage Y from 1964. One of the best floral sheep rows I've ever smelled, ever. Full stop, no, um, you know, uh, you know, nothing to say this, but, you know, uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Um, you know, there's no extra descriptors I need to add to that. Just one of the best sheep rows I've ever smelled and the I love that civet base. Um, the uh, the uh, heart has this orris root note that's very high quality. It makes it slightly powdery, but um, I love the way it blends with the oak moss and styrax and one of the best fragrances of the 60s, in my opinion, hands down. Uh, okay, and then we've got a Dior, and this is probably also full bottle worthy. Rich Mitch says it's one of the most underrated Dior Privés, and I agree with him. It is Queer Canage. I've got two of these, luckily. Uh, Queer Canage is very, very good. It's a uh, leathery iris with orange blossom, and the orange blossom just adds a little bit of, you know, freshness along with the rose and the jasmine. Iris and leather are the two, and those are two of my favorite notes, and combined, they do amazing things, and they do amazing things here. Uh, I think of this as a uh, poor man's Great Britain by Roja. However, this came first, and then Great Britain came afterwards. But I think both are kind of modeled on Caron's um, Tabac Blonde from 1919. I think they both kind of use that carnation iris leather thing um, as like a springboard to what they created. And Queer Canage came out like a year or two before... Um, uh, Great Britain. Okay, and then finally, we're getting down to the end of the decants. We've got Dior's Bois, Bois d'Argent. <laughs> so I was trying to read it backwards, and my brain had a had a mis a misfire there. Um, woody, powdery, uh, Anique Minardo. This is kind of what, again, speaking of springboards, this is what 
uh, got the gears turning um, for Dior Homme because 2004 Bon Argent came out, which was this myrrh, Florentine, iris, ambrette, patchouli, honey, woody, musky thing. Um, and Dior kind of uh, used that in, and Heidi Slimane, who was a creative director at, at Dior at the time, uh, used that idea to then create Dior Homme uh, and the rest is history. So Dior Homme obviously and, and its other flankers will be very high on the list. Okay, so let's do this top 100. My God, we're an hour in. This is going to be a three-hour video, so just be ready. Uh, there's a couple that just missed the top 100. I went through all of the damn work of doing this huge video, so we're going to talk about them anyways. So the ones that just missed, Dunhill for Men, and I have a feeling, this is from 1934, but I have a feeling if I could find a vintage bottle, I would love this. I just feel like it's been reformulated to death. Can you blame it? Um, you know, it's been around forever, but, um, you know, I think it used to be called Dunhill Classic or something, but it's basically lavender, carnation, iris, and leather and cedar with some tonka. Uh, it smells old manish, you know, kind of like equipage has that old manish smell. I think Dunhill for men smells old manish and I love vintages, but I, I really would love to smell a, a vintage of Dunhill for men. Uh, and then a couple spots out of the top 100, Kenzo Porom, uh, the iris is in the heart, but this is kind of this green, ozonic, fruity, you know, fresh aquatic fragrances of the 90s. But the, I think the iris adds some class to Kenzo Porom, you know, not many people think about the, the iris there, but it's definitely there, um, along with that watery ambergris. And then we've got a Givenchy. And this is Ensense. This is a discontinued fragrance that some people go crazy about. I uh, am not one of those people. I don't think this is such a great fragrance, or at least not for me. You know, it's a floral green fragrance. It tries to do this um, masculine floral fragrance is what it tries to do. But, uh, you know, I think it kind of fails because there's a fragrance that I own that I think does a better job. It... Uh, you know, it it does what Givenchy Ensense is trying to do, but it it doesn't fail where Ensense seems to to me to um, you know maybe it's just the '90s and that was the style, but I don't like the freshness of Ensense. I prefer Nino Ceruti Porom, uh, which has more heft of the of the vintage past that came out in '79. It's much more spicy, woody the benzoin and the cedar wood and the oak moss, tons of oak moss and Nino Ceruti Porom uh, and stone pine and thyme and all these other vintage masculine notes uh, that are just missing in Ensense. So Ensense tries to take that masculine floral green fruity style uh, and kind of do it for the 90s, which I don't really appreciate, you know, if that makes sense. So uh, Ensense does have iris in it though, along with mastic. Um, so it's not a bad fragrance, it's just, uh, it's not my favorite type of that style. Okay, and the one that just missed out on being on the top 100, believe it or not, is an Armoff. And it's an Armoff that's called Niche Oud. This is actually a really good perfume. Don't let the fact that um, it's an Armoff put you off. If you like Ombre Sultan by Serge Luton, I'm telling you, this is a fantastic fragrance. It is... Uh, the biggest difference between Ombre Sultan is that this is just a little bit sweeter, okay? So, um, and you'll find that with many of the, in, you know, the Middle Eastern clone houses is whenever they try to make a clone, they always invariably make it a little bit sweeter. And sometimes you'll smell that with their Oud recreations too. Sometimes they smell close, but uh, they're too sweet. You know what I mean? There's something about keeping the sweetness out of things that's hard for them to do. Here, it's um, spices, sage, iris, pepper, patchouli, vanilla, leather, amber. It's actually a beautiful leathery amber to me. Uh, I think it's a really good fragrance. One of our moths best, maybe our moths best fragrance. All right, top 100. Number 100 is uh, the afternoon of a fawn. And look right at the hour mark. How's that? Uh, very underrated perfume here. Just because it's at 100 does not mean it's bad. Spicy, green, 
Uh, Ralph Schwiga is the perfumer. Um, and it's frankincense. Myrrh. Oh, it's actually really, really good. Iris. Um, and when I rank these, you know, remember, I'm not ranking my favorite fragrance with Iris. I'm ranking the Iris note, okay? So most, you're going to find fragrances that are my favorite. Like Bellamy is near the bottom because it's more about the leather, the wood, you know, that kind of thing. The Iris, not so much. The Oris, not so much. Um, so I'm ranking the Oris itself or the Iris itself. This is more about... The Immortel. This is actually one of the best Immortel fragrances money can buy. Okay. Um, it's an Immortel leather with cinnamon and frankincense and rose. If you like Histoire de Parfum 1740, but you think 1740 is maybe too rough and tumble for you, try the Afternoon of a Fawn. Beautiful rose in it as well. Uh, okay. Number 99. I can't believe we're only at number 99. Number 99, I just can't help myself. Number 99 is a L'Artisan Parfumeur. Uh, it's a Bertrand du Chafour, one of my favorite perfumers. It's Al Oud. Again, I want this to be the reference Iris video. I want this to go down as one of the greatest Iris videos of all time because I am pouring my heart and soul into this and I'm, it takes a lot of time. Uh, this is dates, cumin, cardamom, iris, leather, saffron, frankincense, civet in the base. Opens up with lots of spices and cumin. Indian spice feel is what it opens up with. And I think that's why this fragrance never took off. It did come out in 2009 when the Oud craze was really coming out. Um, probably when this first came out, there was nothing like it. But in time, you know, it's not so revolutionary in 2023. But it's a Bertrand du Chafour, and he does not make bad fragrances. And the iris in the mid actually makes that very, very interesting. Um, but you got to get past that just spicy cumin opening. Okay, next is number um, 98. I'm getting confused already. Number 98 is uh, Parfums uh, Wheel or Parfums Wile. Uh, and this is called Zebline. And Zebline is... Um, a fragrance that I bought because uh, it's supposed to be this spicy animalic with honey, which sounds like it would be right up my alley. But so far, nothing has really... Uh, I haven't been taken with this fragrance yet. I'm still trying it. Uh, it's discontinued, so it's hard to find. I got this from Anouge. It's aldehydes, florals, honey, civet. And uh, the iris is in the in the heart notes here, um, so I'll continue to wear it. Maybe I'll we'll see if I can get to that you know point where I have that eureka moment, that breakthrough. But so far, uh, it's not speaking to me the way I was expecting it to. So, but still a really good fragrance. You can definitely see the quality. Um, just waiting for it to click. You know, sometimes it just has to click. So that was number ninety eight. Number ninety seven. And here's the thing. I probably could have put every single one of her fragrances here, um, but I'm only including this one in the list because they all kind of smell the same to me. She overdoses uh, very man many of the same materials. Go watch my reviews on her house. I have an entire playlist dedicated to her house. It's Francesca Bianchi, and uh, this one is called Etruscan Water. It's making the list because it's the only full bottle that I own of Francesca Bianchi. Um, and she does have a very specific style, people say, that orris root, orris butter that she uses um, really stands out. Here, it's spicy, green. Um, Persolais compared this to Azure, which I disagree with. Um, there's labdanum. Speaking of Immortel, uh, I, I much prefer actually the Immortel in the afternoon of a fawn personally, than the Immortel in um, Etruscan Water. However, it does feel like the Oris root here is amped up. That's why it's higher up on the list than the Afternoon of a Fawn. So again, remember, I'm ranking the Oris, the Iris, that kind of thing, that, that, that note, how well it's done, how, you know, and many, when we're doing a list this big, many of the decisions have to be kind of split second. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. These are just my personal opinions. Uh, okay, 
Next is one of my favorite perfumes of all time, just to nail the home, the point. Uh, and this is Leonard Poron. So again, this is more for me uh, about the spices, the woods, the lavender, the thyme. There's a carrot note in here, interestingly enough. G green, artemisia, patchouli, uh, castorium, lots of castorium and leather and frankincense. That's what the fragrance is about. There is iris in the heart, but I think it's just more there to add a little bit of roundness. Um, it's a very rough and, and sharp fragrance to me. It's so good though, man. I mean, the the leather in here, this could easily be a signature scent for me. Um, it's just the, the iris is not the, um, you know, the iris is not the star of the show. But uh, it is there and it deserves to be recognized. All right, number 95 is a Giorgio. This was actually my New Year's Eve scent. Uh, Giorgio Beverly Hills VIP for Men Special Reserve. Hell of a name. Anuj found me this partial. Thank you, Anuj. Uh, this is so good. Uh, Rich Mitch actually just got a bottle himself. Wart has been talking about it on his channel too. Um, spicy and woody is kind of how I would describe it with that patchouli you've come to expect from Giorgio Beverly Hills. But this is more about the aldehydes, the spices, the cardamom, the cinnamon, beautiful cinnamon, the leather, the oak moss, the amber. Uh, it's, it doesn't have that honeyed aspect that... Uh, Giorgio for men, the one everyone knows and talks about, has. Um, but amazing flanker, if you will. Giorgio for men, VIP special reserve. Okay, now here's one that I need to get to know more. I've only worn it to bed once. It's a new acquisition, and it's from the house of Etienne Eigner, and it's called Number One from 1975. Discontinued, unfortunately. Uh, beautiful fragrance though. Very spicy and leathery. My kind of fragrance, you know, if you like spicy, leathery perfumes from the days gone by, you'll like this. I mean, this is, uh, if you like Ted Lapidus Poron from 1978, this is like, you know, something that influenced Ted Lapidus Poron. And it's, so it's mostly about the leather, the moss, the, you know, masculine clary sage, which adds this very sweaty, quality to it. Uh, the vetiver. This is a no-nonsense fragrance, let's put it that way. But there is some iris in the heart just to, you know, give it a touch of a touch of heart. You know, you don't want it to be a completely soulless, uh, you know, when I think of the um, perfume for men in the past, there was supposed to be zero sweetness. It was supposed to have lots of thyme and clary sage and stuff like that, which I love, right? Uh, the iris, I would say, just adds a little, you know, to make it less stoic. You know, I think of the men in the past who, you know, maybe like fought in World War II and, you know, and they took all of that home and they just, they weren't supposed to talk about it. Men in the past were um, taught that only wussies showed their emotions, right? You were supposed to be stoic. That's what I imagine these older fragrances kind of have. They have this stoicism to them. Um, you know, like uh, we're here today and we'll be gone tomorrow and that's just the way it is and don't have any feelings. And the iris just adds a little bit, just maybe, you know, you can tell there's a personality underneath that, underneath that, but they're hiding it. You know, you have to break that outer shell to really get through. That's what the iris adds in a lot of these old masculines, this low on the list. Okay, next is, uh, I shouldn't go on any off-topic rambles because uh, we don't have time. Number 93 is Pierre Cardin's Pour Monsieur, one of the first aero, uh, amber fougeres of all time, uh, 1973, 72. Uh, leathery, spicy, Lavender, God, iris, leather, patchouli, and the patchouli's big here. Patchouli through the years, this would be on that video. Um, I love Chanel's, uh, sorry, Pierre Cardin's Poor Monsieur. Okay, next is number 92, and it's a Giacomo, and it's one that gets almost no love. I will bring it back to the spotlight one day. It's called Anthracite Pour L'Homme, Eau de Toilette. Discontinued. This is the 100 ml splash. Spicy, woody. Um, this is a very strange fragrance because to me, it wears like a fougere, 
there's lots of fougere touches, green, marjoram, um, there's that lavender, um, there's tonka bean, uh, and there's this strange floral heart, cyclamen and jasmine and iris and carnation and, and, and um, there's a sweet corn note. I don't think I've ever seen a sweet corn note in perfume before, but it's actually really good. It's a good fragrance. It's not as good as Giacomo de Giacomo, the vintage, but Anthracite Poilome is a good fragrance. Um, next, number 91, we've got a Balmain. This is marketed towards women, but it's one of the most complex sheepers I've ever smelled. It's called Ivory de Balmain. Uh, again, thank you to Anuj for finding this tester for me. Um, I need to get to know and wear this one more as well. Um, Ivory de Balmain is a floral sheeper with a million notes and stuff you don't always see. There's chamomile, tagets, um, narcissus, violet, uh, asafoetida, asafoetida, I don't know how to pronounce that, I apologize, neroli, ylang ylang, lily of the valley, Turkish rose, raspberry, uh, oak moss, and the iris is, or the oris is in the heart. So beautiful, Shipra. And then we've got number 90, and it's Etienne Eigner number two. So I showed you number one just a second ago. This is number two. And number two came out a year after number one. Number one came out in 1975. Number two came out in 1976. And this is more of a spicy, fresh, more of a fougere take, okay? So the lavender's amped up, the heliotrope is amped up, amped up or there, I don't think there's any heliotrope in the first one. And, um, you know, it, it highlights that fern-like aspect of fougeres, right? And there's iris in the heart as well. It feels like the iris is amped up. Remember with number one, I said, number one is very stoic, right? This is more laid back, maybe a little bit more modern, um, softer, still spicy, but also adds a little bit of freshness. And the iris, I think, plays a big part, I think. So that's Etienne Eigner number two at number 90. Number 89 is a Clive Christian. And let me grab it over here because I've got things kind of spread out everywhere. So number 89 is a Clive Christian. And actually, let me put some of this stuff back. Um, okay. Number 89... I just don't want to crush anything. Okay, number 89 is a Clive Christian, and it is number one, number one, mm, let's try this again, number one for men, this one right here, uh, and kind of a cool little get up, if you will, but um, number one for men has one of the most cringe marketing you'll ever see. If you look at the bottle right here, it says the world's most expensive perfume. I mean, to put that on the bottle and that for that to be your selling point. And the fragrance is actually not that good is the thing about it. Like you would think, whoa, the world's most expensive perfume. Holy moly. It's actually just this floral powdery fragrance done by a perfumer who has almost no clout, Patricia Cho. Um, tarragon and um, cardamom and caraway and nutmeg and paprika open and then it's mostly about the heliotrope iris jasmine lily of the valley rosy langy lang and this uh, vanillic woody generic kind of dry down but um, I can't say I really yearn to wear the most expensive fragrance in the world but um, but yes that's there is an iris note and so the marketing says, famed for its masterful balance of rare and precious ingredients. Number one delivers a superlative punch of potent yet delicate notes. And what's crazy is for the price, you could get an Arige La Dore, a Russian Atom uh, fragrance, that you actually are getting rare and precious ingredients in. So, okay, so, whoa. All right, so that is number, uh, what did I say that was? That was number 89. Number 88 is Back to L'Artisan Parfumea. 
and it is Zing! Discontinued, unbelievably discontinued. I really like Zing. I think Zing is like uh, Luchizan's um, trying to create something modern out of the Russian leather accord. It's leather, ginger, saffron, iris. There is this caramel note that you would think I would hate caramel in a perfume. And I normally do. We talked about this on the live stream the other day. But there's something about the way it's used here that I don't necessarily hate it. Uh, there is a animalic base. And maybe because some people say it smells like a circus or something like that. Um, maybe it's because I, I am such a, a sucker for animalics that my nose can focus on the animalics and the caramel doesn't bother me. But there is also iris in the heart. Actually, really nice leathery, animalic leathery fragrance. Discontinued, sadly. But um, number 88 is Zing. Number 87 is another discontinued fragrance. This one's even newer. Uh, it is uh, a 2016 release from the house of John Varvatos. It's actually my favorite from the entire house. It's Dark Rebel Rider. And... Um, I don't have a cap because I think this was a tester, but I'm so glad to have this. It's really, really good. And this really makes me think, man, I wonder what Rodrigo Flores Rue could do with a big budget, you know? Like, imagine Rodrigo Flores Rue making Roja perfumes. I know they're friends, so that's why I mentioned that. Um, leathery, spicy, there's so much going on. Saffron, marjoram, aldehydes. Violet, labdanum, frankincense, tolu balsam, Russian leather, cacao, woods, cedar, patchouli, and Florentine iris in the heart. Actually, really uh, great flanker. Better than the original, in my opinion. Dark Rebel Rider, number... Uh, I'm starting to lose my place. Uh, Dark Rebel Rider, number 87. Number 86 is a new addition to my collection. I wore it to bed the other night, and eh, it was okay. It didn't blow me away, but I enjoyed it. I'll have to wear it more. I really liked how uh, dry, there's a, there's a dry, um, how would I describe the fragrance? It is, I would say there's like this dry, Shepra. It's a Shepra for sure. And it's a floral Shepra. But something with the aldehydes and the way that it's used with the woods and vetiver and leather makes it come across as very dry and tart. Tart's not a bad word for it. Uh, the fragrance is called Antelope. Antelope Parfum de Toilette from the house of Wheel. Uh, Parfum's Wheel. Um, I don't know when this came out. I'm, I'm assuming it's pretty old. Uh, this is a little 30 mil that I scored from a from a friend, but um, it it does have the florals, but the florals seem almost decaying, decadent. I don't know how I would describe it. I need to wear this more. Um, there is an ambergris note in the base, and maybe that animalic ambergris is what's giving it that decaying quality. I don't know. I have to wear it more, but the iris is in the... Um, Heart. Okay, next is number 85, and this is a creed, a creed that some love. I so-so don't love it. Uh, I don't hate it either, because I, I can see it does have some uh, redeeming qualities to it, but there, it's, it's not what creed asks for. You know, creed wants like a thousand bucks for this bottle, which is absolutely insane. Uh, so this is called Spice and Wood. And you can see that I just have enough still to wear it and talk about it for the channel. But uh, this bottle is basically used up. 2010, this came out. And um, it is this big apple opening. Apple with birch. So it's kind of smoky and fresh and woody is how I would describe it with iris in the base. So iris and, and those popular, you know, the way that Creed makes everything fresh, where you can like wear it any time. There's this freshness to it. Iris and musk and woods, um, spices, 
but it really feels like you can wear this any place, any time. I don't see what's so special about it, but um, I'll do a full review before that bottle is all gone. All right, next we've got number 84, and we've got uh, one of my favorite new discoveries of the 1980s from last year, and this is called MCM Success. My God, man. If you love Hugo Boss, number one, like I do, you have to try MCM Success. It's spicier. Um, it has this spicy honey accord with tobacco. And that combination uh, is just a killer. Honey, tobacco, iris, and then this leather dry down with, you know, 80s, uh, the 80s style masculine punchiness to it. The iris is in the heart, along with patchouli. Patchouli is a big note here as well, I should mention. I think patchouli is kind of what gives it this heft. I did a full review on a fragrance that came out a year after MCM Success, and I think just straight copied MCM Success, and it's by the house of Pacoma, and it's called Gatsby. I actually want a bottle of that, but I went on there and talked about how much I liked it, and everyone went out and scooped up the bottles before I got a chance to grab one at a fair price. So I'm just kind of sitting on my hands, see if a partial comes my way. But Gatsby is also very, very good. Success is better. Um, so that was number 84. Number 83 is a Giorgio for Men, uh, and it's the original Giorgio for Men by Giorgio Beverly Hills. And uh, this comes in a little bit higher than Giorgio for Men VIP Special Reserve because it really feels like that powdery orris root plays a bigger role here than it does along with the uh, patchouli and the honey. And the honey mixing with that powdery orris root really gives the, um, you know, Giorgio Beverly Hills, it's, uh, you know, that uh, powdery honey that you, is known for, the orris root is what gives it that. So I put it a little bit higher than its, uh, than its uh, younger brother. All right, so that's number 83. Number 82, believe it or not, is a diptyque. I think it's the only diptyque on this list, and it is Volutes. And there's a fragrance that this, I think, kind of copied or took notes from, for sure, uh, that's going to be much, much higher on the list. And if you know what it is, you'll have an idea. Um... You'll, it's pretty high on my list. I really love the way that the iris is, is used in both of these, but um, this is clearly a big inspired by fragrance. And, um, you know, Volutes, it was done by Fabrice Pellegran. It's iris, cinnamon, apopanax, and honey with that tobacco. Um, the uh, apopanax is known as sweet myrrh. And sometimes myrrh can have this resinous, leathery quality to it. And there's slight leathery, you know, tobacco, iris, cinnamon. It's a really great... Um, the EDT, anyways. I, I, don't, I haven't smelled the EDP, which I hear it's thicker and better suited for winter. But the EDT is very versatile. You know, there's, uh, it's not as heavy as you would think. It's nowhere near as heavy as, let's say, MCM Success. Okay, next on the list, we've got number 81, and this is Zoologist Moth, my only full bottle of a Zoologist, and this is such a, um, this is such a artistic fragrance is the way I would describe it. Uh, it kind of has like three different parts. It opens up spicy, cumin, cloves, that kind of thing, cinnamon and, and saffron and you think you kind of have a grasp on it, and then it transitions into this floral fragrance that'll remind you of a vintage Guerlain. Heliotrope, iris, jasmine, rose, mimosa, lily of the valley, that kind of thing. And then transitions again to this smoky, oody, resinous, honeyed fragrance. The iris again is in the heart. If you like complex, challenging fragrances, moth is definitely worth sniffing. Okay, next on the list we have number... 80, uh, and probably one of the most underlooked Davidoff fragrances of the 80s. Everyone talks about Zeno. 
no one talks about the original Davidoff from 1984. And let me get my uh, discontinued, less abstracts microfiber cloth. Make sure there's no fingerprints, of course. We don't want the finger police com coming, the finger police, the fingerprint police coming down on us. So, um, Davidoff from 1984. I wish I had a bigger bottle and a backup, but uh, this is all I have. Uh, this is uh, very green, leathery. If you like the way that Dior Jules has that, you know, uh, leathery, green, artemisia, mugwort. Um, there's a note of hay, which I think is supposed to play the same trick that... Um, Papillon, Liz Moore's used in Papillon's uh, Tobacco Rose. There's no there's no tobacco in, in Tobacco Rose. It's hay. And I think the Davidoff hay is supposed to kind of give homage to Davidoff's history as being a t tobacconist. Lots of, um, that's where Davidoff, that's where Zeno Davidoff, the man, kind of got his start in the family business of being a tobacconist. I think that's how you say it. But, um, you know, they sold all kinds of tobacco. And um, uh, this is a classic case of, you know, implementing the company's history into the perfume. It's beautiful. And again, the Irish just kind of takes the edge off of that stoic sharpness. I love it though. I love how challenging it is. I love the castorium. I love the leather, the oak moss, all that good stuff. Um, so if you like the kind of vintage fragrances I love, if you're in love with stuff like this, like I'm wearing today, you have to give Davidoff uh, the original a try. All right, number 79. This may be a shocker for some, but I think this is an amazing fragrance. Uh, this is Dunhill's Icon. One of my favorite Neroli orange blossom fragrances, but they've mixed it with Iris and Oud. And, you know, it kind of opens up smelling a bit like grape soda to me. And I like fragrances that smell like soda. Uh, and so grape soda, feel peppery grape soda, but it dries down to this lavender. Uh, sage is a very masculine note. There's this green vegetal sage here with iris and oud and leather in the base. I think this is stunning. This is why I never bought Terre de Hermes for the longest time. So Dunhill's icon. Okay, next is a Clive Christian at number 78, and it is... Clive Christians, C for men, in the ostrich box, me lord. Uh, so C for men, and of course it has to sit in the silk. Wouldn't sit in anything other than silk. Uh, C for men is Clive Christians' take on Tuscan leather. Tuscan leather came out in uh, 2007. C for Men came out in 2010. And, um, you know, they claim that there's oud and tea and mate tea and all this other stuff, but it smells like a more intense version of uh, Tuscan leather, basically. It's leathery, spicy. The um, orris root here is in the heart. I love this DNA. As you can see, I put a hell of a dent in this bottle. Um, so yes, C for Men is a winner for me. Um, and let's see, where were we? Ah, yes. You know what I just noticed? We just, uh, we just, I just noticed something. We have an error. Let's see if I can fix it without too much trouble. Um, can we fix the error? Let's see. All right. We're going to have to do like a, every, everyone moves down a notch. So C for men now becomes number 79. Apologies. So number 78 is going to be, um, is going to be a Bond number nine fragrance. 
and this is called New York Oud. My one of my favorite Bond number nines. Uh, I don't own New Harlem. I would love to own a vintage bottle of New Harlem, but you know, uh, it's kind of rare and hard to find. So, Bond number nines, New York Oud is uh, one of my current favorites. It's uh, also probably one of my favorite, you know, um, Western Oud fragrances, if you will. Not from one of the big indie houses, let's say. Uh, I wouldn't lump the stuff that Arise La Dore and Ensar is doing into the stuff that Creed and Bond Number no. 9 is doing. Uh, but there's a beautiful red plum note in here. Very succulent and realistic. It's almost zingy, you know, when you smell that red plum note mixed with the uh, orange zest and saffron and oud and honey and rose. It adds this zinginess to it. And um, Iris... Um, Iris is uh, part of the combination with patchouli and musk and vetiver. Beautiful fragrance. I don't know if it's still available, but uh, I love this stuff. It's so good. One of my favorite Bond number nines. New York Oud at now number 78. Sorry to have to move things around on you. Number 77. Actually, we have back-to-back -back Eldos, and it's Rien. And it is Rien Intense Incense. And they both actually use um iris or oris one of them uh rien is uh oris absolute in the heart and then i actually put rien intense incense one step higher um there's iris here i don't know which one you know it's hard to say you know which iris feels heavier to me it almost feels like there's a little bit of castorium in Rien Intense Incense, so maybe, maybe it should be Rien that is higher up on the Iris Totem Pole. I'm not sure how to rank these, um, but Rien, I put it number 77, and Rien Intense Incense at number 76. Um, maybe I'll switch them. I think we'll do some switching on the fly. We'll put Rien at number 76 and Rien Intense Incense at number 77. How's that? Making changes on the fly. You know, going off of memory, it's hard to remember which one had more iris, but my guess is maybe the Oris Absolute from Rien adds a little extra, so we'll, we'll go with that. Number 75 is um, an Aramis fragrance, and it is the original Aramis Aramis from 1975, Aram, or 1966. Yeah, 64, sorry, 1964. One of the best masculines of all time. Spicy, leathery, lots of green uh, artemisia, clover, and thyme, and you'll definitely notice the myrtle and um, clary sage, and castorium, moss, and leather, uh, and it has orris root in the base, one of my favorite masculines of all time. Thank God I have a backup of um, Aramis. Aramis, so that is number uh, 75, we're only at number 75. Number 74 is going to be a fragrance from the house of Rocco Barocco. And it's called, I'm actually looking for it. Uh, what did I do with it? See, this is going to be one of the problems once we get into the, um, once we get into the other fragrances. Okay, here we go. It is called Joint. One of my favorite fragrances of all time. Again, thank God I have a backup bottle. One backup's enough usually. I love this stuff, man. I am in love with Joint. Pour Homme. Everything about it. Came out in the 90s but it smells like it came out in the 80s. It literally has that um, late 80s feel. You know, people compare it to Jacques Bogart Furio because the bottles look the same. They are a little bit different, of course, um, but uh, this is much more green, I feel like, than Furio. There's lots of mugwort and basil and, you know, lots of green notes, if you will, and the um the orris root again is in the heart where you where you'll usually see orris 
but it dries down to this leathery civet that is just to die for, man. So don't worry about the, um, uh, don't worry whether you find a bottle that says um, Hescanas or whether you find a bottle that says P2 Parfums or 2P Parfums. Any bottle you get is, is great. Uh, if you can just find a bottle, go for it. All right, next on the list, we've got number 73. Number 73 is number five by Chanel. So this is an older Eau de Cologne. Um, I would love to get maybe a full bottle of the Eau de Cologne here just to test and see if the bottle that I got, because I got a partial and, you know, it was kind of beat up, as you can see. It looks like it's been through some stuff. It's definitely Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Cologne. I don't think it's fake or anything, but I would love to see if maybe um, a newer bottle that may maybe has never been used before or well kept or was kept better has some different, you know, features to it. But number 5 uh, is not my favorite fragrance, but my the Eau de Cologne is my favorite version of number 5, that aldehydic floral iris in the heart. Okay, next on the list, we've got a Pharrell Williams perfume at number 72, and it is Girl. So Girl by Pharrell Williams is a take on Pharrell Williams' favorite fragrance when he was growing up, which was Fahrenheit. And so Comte Garçons made this, um, and they basically made uh, a more lavender-heavy uh, irisy version. Iris and violet kind of jump out more than what you get in Fahrenheit. It's almost like, um, it's almost like uh, Fahrenheit meets Narciso Rodriguez for him, Eau de Toilette. You know, it's that kind of, it's that kind of vibe. Um, but the iris and styrax in the heart is beautiful. Check this out if you can. It's discontinued, but Still bottles floating around. Okay, next on the list, we've got one of the greatest fragrances of all time. Number 71 is The Great Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. So, Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. Eau de Toilette is the one I grabbed. You could also grab The Secret de Parfum. Either would work. I just, I love this stuff, man. Huh. Opium is, um, in my opinion, one of the greatest orientals of all time. It came out in 77. It's got a loads of notes, but mostly you're going to get this. Um, oh God, the clove is so big when you first spray, but it dries down into this plummy oriental um, and orris root and carnation peach rose. There's a bit of castorium in the base too. It's kind of an animalic uh, ambery dry down. Uh, and the orange is very prominent in the opening, so you're going to get this mandarin orange, you know, feel to bring you down into the rest of the notes. But um, any version of opium, I've never smelled the pure parfum, but uh, the myrrh, the apopanax, and again, the orris, which makes it sort of powdery, is in the heart. Beautiful fragrance, so one of my favorites, one of my favorites of all time. That comes in at number 71. Number 70 is a Gianfranco Fede, and it's Gianfranco Fede for man. Now, be careful, because they have one for men, and it's different. This is for man from 1986 at number 70. Uh, and Gianfranco Fede is a spicy, leathery, um, probably one of my favorite Italian citrus openings of all time. The lemon, bergamot, and tangerine is just unbelievable. Lasts forever. And there's that iris and lavender petit gras uh, in the heart, which is which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, just uh, all around. I love wearing it in the heat. So even though it's leathery and oak mossy, in the heat, for me, Gianfranco Fede from Man really shines. All right, number 69. Am I going to be able to make it? My voice is like giving out on me. Am I going to be able to make it? Let's go, Ramsey. All right, number 69, we've got Luciano Pavarotti. So Luciano Pavarotti is uh, a favorite of my brother from another mother, Rich Mitch. And 
Oh, I completely see why. I mean, one of the best patchouli fragrances of all time. It's got that honey patchouli with uh, ivy and clove and iris and rose and uh, the Russian leather. When you wear this in the heat, the Russian leather in the base will definitely come out. It'll come out more than when you wear it in the cold. <clears throat> so that was number 69. Number 68 is Erosia. And it's <clears throat> it's actually... <coughs> Excuse me. Oligarch. Roja's Oligarch. Um, look at the smokiness on the bottom of the bottle. You ever seen this before? What is that? Look at that. Crazy, eh? It's really good, though. Um, Oligarch is one of the reasons I never bought Teta Hermes until just recently. It is, um, uh, Oligarch is a niche, I don't even want to say it's a niche version of Terre de Hermes because it's so much more. It's basically a fruity sheep is how I would describe it, but it smells a bit like Terre, okay? It smells like Terre if Terre had a bunch of moving parts and it didn't rely so heavily on the ISOE Super. Terre de Hermes, excuse me, has a huge ISOE Super Blast. This, you get... Strawberries, blackcurrant, coconut, apples, you know, all of these fruity notes with the lavender and thyme. Uh, the iris is in the base. Like Roja loves to put many of his, you'll notice his note tree is a little different from other houses. So you'll get the iris and the birch and the leather and all that stuff in the base. So posh. This is a very posh fragrance. Like for the heat, very posh. Um... So Roja's Oligarch at number 68. Number 67 is um, when I did my top 100, my favorite fragrance of all time. It's Bellamy, the original. And uh, this is, my God, you know, these two, these are the two juggernauts right here for me. Number one, number two, depending on the day. You pick the day, it could be this one. You pick the day, it could be that one. But Bellamy is... Uh, uh, a fragrance for life for me. It's um, carnation and sage, uh, cedar, patchouli, castorium, leather, styrax, and orris root, and vetiver. Um, my my favorite leather. It's perfect for me. It's like a leather for me, if that makes sense. All right, next on the list, we've got number 66, and I'm going to have to start reaching behind me here. Um, because this is going to be, we're going to go, we're going to grab them as we go. So I should hurry up. This is going to be Azaro Porom. One of the best barber shop scents of all time. Uh, made by Gerard Anthony. It has that classic anise lavender iris opening. Very important. With uh, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, oak moss, leather. Just all kind of just amazing barber shop. I like wearing this in the heat again. Uh, Chris from Scentland did a video where he said he prefers to wear this in the cold. I prefer to wear this in the warmer weather, believe it or not. Um, God, just the spices, the, um, you know, if you've ever smelled Reeve Gauche or those kind of barbershop, Reeve Gauche Pour Homme, you'll, you'll see the Azaro Pour Homme as its grandfather. Okay, next we've got number 65, and it is a Gucci. It is a Gucci. Pour Homme from 1976. Gucci Pour Homme from 1976. This is a Scannon version. Um, and you can see the shitty old school atomizer from back in the day like they used to do it. Uh, but this is probably one of the best Gucci fragrances ever made. Uh, Guy Robert made this. And uh, it's basil, lavender, lemon, with that iris, spices, pepper, amber, oak moss, labdanum. You know, if you like stuff like, uh, if you like stuff like, um, Ar de Capucci or Eau Sauvage or Tiffany for Men, you know, those kind of fragrances, um, Gucci Pour Homme from 1976 kind of falls into that. If you like, uh, the original Ho Hang by Balenciaga, it falls right into that. 
Okay, that was number 65. Number 64 is a Pascal Morbito fragrance, and it's called O.R. Noir. So O.R. Noir is um, an aldehydic floral fragrance uh, that in the heart has iris, elang, gardenia, jasmine, and it's floral, it's spicy. I actually prefer O.R. Noir to something like Chanel Number no. 5. That's why I say I want to maybe see if um, a different bottle may give me a little different reaction to Number no. 5, but this has been a great find. This is a new addition to my collection, O.R. Noir, but I'm, I, uh, I really enjoy it. I'm really enjoying it so far. All right, I'm going to have to speed up here, so you're going to have to forgive me or else we're not going to finish because my throat's going out. Number 63 is uh, Beloved Man by Amouage, and Beloved Man is probably one of my favorite fragrances to wear in the heat. It's got this, oh my God, grapefruit, LME, um, it's so very posh, and the iris and saffron is in the heart. Okay, next we're going to go to number 62. Number 62 is one of the greatest fragrances of all time. Again, for me, top um, top three. So I mentioned Bellamy and Chanel compete for number one, two, and this is the one that's up there with three. This is YSL's Koros. And, you know, Koros plays this good, good, bad, uh, good guy, bad guy, right? It plays the dirty and clean. It plays the, it plays the, um, angel and devil, if you will, because Koros, I mean, look at the atomizer. Uh, Koros is animalic and spicy, aldehydes, clary sage, and there is orris root in the heart. Most people don't think about that, but there is. And there's that honeyed civet, pissy honey civet dry down. I love it. Whatever Simrise animalis note is in here, um, I don't care what it is. I absolutely love Koros. All right, so that was number 62. Number 61 is going to be uh, one of my favorite modern Sheepras to wear. It's Diaghilev. So Diaghilev is a classic. It's opera music. It's, um, oh God. I mean, just the way that the notes blend. There's a million notes in Diaghilev. I could read them to you. You'd have no clue what it smells like. Uh, it's, it's a... Um, you know, it's a blend of many classic Sheepras, I would say. It's a little bit of Mitsuko, a little bit of Rocha's Femme, a little bit of Bandi, a little bit of Azure with that Rocha touch. He roja it up. And um, the Iris um, is, again, in the base, interestingly enough. It's not in the heart. It's in the base. So, yeah, there is some. there is a method to the madness of the way that... Uh, the roses are created. Okay, number 60 is a Guerlain, and it's a new Guerlain. It came out last year. It's the uh, Millicime Tonka flanker of Shalimar. Now, uh, I prefer the original Shalimar by a mile. This is not a bad fragrance. It's just I already have, um, you know, I already have Tonka Imperial, so this is a little bit redundant for me. But it's okay. There's an iris note with that bitter almond tonka and vanilla thing. It's not bad. It's just not great. Um, maybe I'll review it and sell it. Okay, next on the list we've got number 59, and it is Encre Noir Al Extreme. And this is actually Encre Noir with Iris. Uh, iris is one of the biggest additions. And... Um, it is a little bit more ambery than normal Encre Noir, but that Haitian vetiver, man. Oh, man. Haitian, Haitian and Java vetiver and Elemi. Uh, it's just brilliant. Honestly, it's brilliant. Okay. Next on the list, we've got Azurjoff. And we have number 58. And it is Zerjoff Om, my only full bottle of a Zerjoff. Uh, number 58, Zerjoff Om is um, Zerjoff's take on something like Keniche 10, if you will. 
It's uh, tarragon, caraway, iris, leather, birch. You know, it's, it's very smoky. It's more smoky than Caniche Tin, I would say. One of my... One of my favorite leather fragrances of all time. I love Zerjoff Ulm. Okay, next on the list, we've got number 57. I should have been going this fast from the get-go. Um, number 57 is this little bad boy. Etienne Eigner. Super Fragrance for Men. Great name. 1978. Uh, super Fragrance for Men is uh, Tarragon, Clary Sage, Galbanum, Iris, Woods, Costas, it's kind of animalic, it's spicy, it's woody. The iris in the in the uh is in the mid. Beautiful fragrance. Super fragrance for men at number seven, uh 57. Number 56, and again, I'm gonna have to grab stuff back here because I don't have space, so bear with me. It's gonna be like this for the rest of the video. Um so number 56 is going to be Trussardi Uomo, one of my favorite um Italian leather fragrances. I feel like my brain is shot from all this talking. This was this was a terrible idea. I don't think I'm ever doing a video this long again, by the way. Uh, spicy, leathery, lavender aldehydes, uh, and it's got this like honeyed iris in the heart with cinnamon, and it just dries down to this unbelievable Italian leather. I absolutely love it. One of uh, Beatrice Piquet's best, along with Lawn Stomp de Guerlain. Okay, next on the list, we've got a Chanel. Number 55 is Chanel's Cristal Eau de Parfum. Uh, so Cristal Eau de Parfum, and this is another one where I very well may do a video on this and sell this one if I start selling off my collection. I never connected with it. It also has that cold iris, kind of like iris uh, silver... Mist, I mentioned, has this cold iris to it, but there's almost this, um, you know, cigarette smoke vibe to Cristal that I get. But it's got that Chanel poshness, that green, peach, hyacinth, and jasmine, and rosewood. So maybe it'll grow on me, but um, the Eau de Parfum, I don't know, maybe I'd appreciate the Eau de Toilette more. Okay, next on the list, we've got number 54. And it's a, it's a Guerlain, and it is Mouchoir de Monsieur from 1904. And I love Mouchoir de Monsieur. It's one of my favorite uh, fougere fragrances. It's powdery, it's animalic, that lavender, and it's the iris that, uh, iris and oris that give it that powdery feel. Uh, it's got lemon vervain, and I love the civet. I love the animalics in here. Just a classy, even though it came out in 1904, I could easily wear that. Such a classy fragrance. Okay, next on the list, we have number 53, and it is a Fendi. And it is Fendi Uomo. Fendi Uomo at number 53. Uh, just look at that bottle, man. So Fendi Uomo is the uh, younger brother of Trussardi Uomo, who's the older brother. And uh, Fendi Uomo spicy leathery they've added like angelica and a couple other things that are that are missing from the trussardi but uh basically i get the same vibe there's some cypress here there's no cypress in the trussardi um but that castorium leather man with that you know grandmother's spice cabinet where all the spices have like soaked in you know and the iris in the base in the heart is just stunning i love fendi womo uh, but I love these type of leather fragrances, so that is not a surprise. Okay, next on the list, we've got number 52, and it's a Hermes. And this is an amazing fragrance, actually, for women called Amazon. I love this stuff. This is so, so good. And I need to do a bottle before I wear it all. Uh, so, um, Amazon came out in uh, 1974. It's also a floral chipra. Maurice Maureen created this. And the hyacinth, that ca there's a cassis note that's absolutely beautiful. And um, it also has a little bit of a coldness to it. Speaking of cold fragrances, th there's also a little bit of a coldness to the iris here, but it warms up over time. Um, I need to wear this more, but I really, really like it. 
I think it's a great, I think it's a great release from 1974. If you like those green, if you like, actually, now that I'm sniffing it again, if you like YSL's Y, Amazon, which came out a decade later, I think pulls bits and pieces from YSL Y. Okay, next on the list, we have number 51 is a Lancome. And this is actually Quia de Lancome. I wore this about a month ago. And if you like that um, leather iris thing I keep talking about, but you don't want it so harsh and you want more florals, this is your ticket to that. There's this Play-Doh-y vibe to it. Almost like it has... Um,